Praise the Lord and welcome to Severin Network uh, Telecast and we want to thank God for you tuning in today. Uh, this, this day we want to thank God for everything he has done for us thus far he has brought us. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we want to say thank you for this day that you have blessed us with and we want to say thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to share your word again. I thank you for the listeners and the viewers and we pray my father that you will minister to them minister to us as we go through your word may your name be exalted in jesus mighty name we pray amen hallelujah so today we want to come to you again with the word of the lord and we want to say thank you for tuning in and for those of you who have been following us on the various uh, social media platforms and on television, we want to say thank you very much. May the Lord richly bless you. Over the, over the last few weeks, we have been talking about the characteristics of the true church as Jesus left it. And uh, last week, we ended on the, the church as the bride of Jesus Christ. And today, we would want to look at Jesus' final message or Jesus' messages to the seven churches, which was actually... The, the messages were for, meant for us, and the messages were actually meant to make sure that the church which he left here on earth is kept in check, and the church is, <clears throat> is not taken by surprise, or the church does not stray. So we want to thank God very much, because we, when we look at the revelation of Jesus Christ, we see that Jesus loved the church so much, and he decided to give the church, what he expects of the church. The church as a bride, Jesus gave his final messages uh, in the revelation to John, the, the revelator in the book of Revelation. And we see that when John was giving this message, these are the words that Jesus spoke. Let's read from Revelation chapter 1. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 1 says that the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. So you can see Jesus actually wanted his bride or the church to be informed about what he wants about what he expects the church to be like. Jesus wanted to solidify a relationship between him and the bride and the church that he left here on earth. And so the revelation of Jesus Christ, many times the book of Revelation is taken as a book of horror, is a book of fiction, is a book of mysteries. But when we look at the beginning chapter, of the book of Revelation, we see that these are actually the things that Jesus revealed to us as a church so that we are not taken unaware, so that we know what exactly to do and how to avoid the things that Jesus does not want us to do and what he wants us to do to carry on. So in a way, Jesus fulfilled his promises that say that he will not leave us nor forsake us. He gave us already what he wanted us to do. So Jesus' messages to the seven churches actually are the messages that are meant to keep the churches or the church of Jesus Christ in check. <coughs> Excuse me. And so today, we want to look at these this, 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 this messages, the seven messages to the seven churches, what Jesus uh, did. And we are going to look at them one by one. And at the end, we shall ask ourselves certain pertinent questions by which we are able to keep ourselves in check. Hallelujah. So let's begin with the book of the church of Ephesus. And that is in the book of Revelation chapter 2. In chapter 2, Jesus reveals himself as the one that holds the seven stars and the one that walks in the midst of the candlestick. And we see in the book of Revelation, Jesus says, the seven stars means the seven angels of the seven churches. 
and the seven candlesticks are the seven churches to whom the messages were directed. So Jesus actually says he is the owner of these churches. And at the time when Jesus was speaking to these churches, these were the established churches which were operating at that time. But that, that, it doesn't mean that the messages were only for those churches. The messages of those churches are the messages for the church today as we speak. Hallelujah. So to the church of Ephesus, you will see that Jesus says he acknowledged their good works. I want us to just look at this as a study today for us to understand what Jesus wants us to do. Jesus says, I acknowledge the good works, the church of Ephesus. Jesus says, I also see that you have enduring patience, and I see that you're very sensitive to evil, and you immediately reject those that claim to be mine, and yet they are not. In other words, you have the discerning spirit. You're able to discern that this is a wrong spirit, this is a right spirit. And even the, pretend, the, the pretentious, the pretentious spirits, you are able to uh, detect them, discern them, and you reject them immediately. And Jesus said, even for my sake, you have suffered. You have suffered for my sake, and you have not denied me. You have gone tr through tribulations, and you have suffered for my sake. You have not denied me. You have not given up. Hallelujah. And you have hated the Nicolaitan teaching, the Nicolaitan teaching, as we shall see later, is the false teaching, the false doctrine, which we are going to be looking at in future. The false doctrines and the false teachers that promote these doctrines. They were already operating at that time when Jesus Christ was giving his messages to the seven churches of the book of Revelation. So Jesus said, you even reject the teachings of the Nicolaitans. These, these were corrupt teachers that wanted to corrupt the church at that time. However, Jesus says he had one thing against them. He had one thing against them, and that was they had forgotten their first love. Hallelujah. They had forgotten their first love. We may be moving in the footsteps of the church of, of Ephesus or the Ephesian church as Jesus acknowledged. But one thing that we forget, only one thing, and that is the first love. The first love that Jesus talked about was the commitment, the intimate relationship that we have with God. The intimate relationship that we have with God. A couple of times, many times when we first get saved, the zeal that we have for the gospel is amazing. The zeal that we have for God is amazing. For prayer, for the things of God is amazing. But over time, as we go by, it becomes normal. And we begin to take it as a by the way. And this is what Jesus was telling the church of, Eph of Ephesians, the Ephesian church. And he said, you have forgotten that commitment. You have forgotten that first love that you had with me. You have forgotten the relationship that you had with me. Hallelujah. So this was the fault of the church of Ephesus. As we go through these messages of, to the seven churches, the messages of Jesus Christ, note that there are certain things that Jesus actually said, all of them are right except one. Why? Because Jesus wants, all of, he wants to present us as a church to the Father as a pure and perfect bride. That is the reason why Jesus wants us to be perfect. Because the Bible says that we must be holy because without holiness we cannot see God. And that is the reason Jesus expects even the little details for us to be able to, to take into consideration. So that was for the Ephesian church. Hallelujah. Then we look at the church, the Smyrna church. In the book of Revelation chapter 2, beginning from verse 8, the church of Smyrna. And here, Jesus reveals himself as the first and the last. He reveals himself as the Alpha and the Omega. He reveals himself as the resurrection. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, 
I acknowledge your good works. The same thing that he did to the Ephesian church. And I also acknowledge that you have gone through tribulation. You have gone through tribulation. You have suffered for my sake. And he also said, I also acknowledge that you are actually poor physically. Although the Bible says that he earned, let's read that portion of the scripture. In verse 9, it says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. And he puts in brackets and says, but thou art rich. Because Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 5, blessed are the poor. I think verse 8, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. So these people were poor physically. And physically they were actually destitutes. It was a poor church. The church of Smyrna was a very, very poor church in the physical. But in the spirit, they were rich. Hallelujah. And Jesus calls them rich because they were rich in the things of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then Jesus also acknowledged and said, even where you are, you are living in the midst of a highly organized deception. But you still manage to stay righteous. You still manage to live a righteous life. Jesus was encouraging this minor church. Praise the Lord. Jesus encourages them with these words. And he says, fear not of the things which you shall suffer. Hallelujah. He said, fear not of the things which you shall suffer. This is the words of the Lord. For sure the devil will cast some of you, hallelujah, into prison to be tried. This is what Jesus was saying to the church of, of Smyrna. There will be a lot of tribulation. And he says 10 days, which of course it is symbolic. Hallelujah. But he encourages them and says, be faithful unto the end. Be faithful even unto death. Praise the Lord. I know many of us as a church today, when we begin to talk about suffering for Christ and, and persevering tribulation, even unto death, many of us do not want to comprehend it. Many of us don't want to even to think about it because we think we are not supposed to go through that. But as a church, I want to let you know that the church that gave us the foundation of the faith that we enjoy today, they went through it. And time is coming and the time is now. In Uganda, we may not be having that persecution. But I'm telling you, in other countries, people are suffering. Christians are being persecuted. Others are being killed for the sake of the gospel. But Jesus promises them, one, he encourages them with one word and says, Be faithful unto the end. Hallelujah. Because he gives a promise and says, If you overcome to those that overcome, I'll give you the crown of life. To those that overcome, they will never test death again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Time is coming when as a church, we shall face the same persecution that the church of Smyrna faced. We are not yet facing it here in Uganda at that scale, although we already have it. But time is coming when we will go through the same. But Jesus encourages us and says, be faithful unto the end. Be faithful even unto death. Hallelujah. This kind of faithfulness can only be possible when you have a close relationship with God. This kind of faithful cannot be, you cannot be, you cannot be faithful to this level if you, are, if you have a partial Christianity, you have partial faith, you have compromising faith. Hallelujah. This can only be for those that are absolute and absolutely sold out for Jesus Christ. So to the church of Smyrna, Jesus actually encourages them. He saw that they are doing the right thing, but they were becoming weak, weak in faith, weak physically. They were suffering. Jesus comes and says, hold on. And the same message is to you today. Hold on as a church. You may be going through difficulties. You may be going through circumstances that are impossible to bear, but hold on as a church because help is on the way. Jesus is coming to rescue you. Hallelujah. To the church of Pergamos, Jesus reveals himself in the, book of, in the book of Revelation, still chapter 2, verse 12, from verse 12. But Jesus here reveals himself as the word. Hallelujah. You see, to all these churches, Jesus revealed himself according to the needs of the church. 
And I know that every church, every congregation has a different need. You will have a different need. To your need, Jesus will reveal himself as the need of that church. So to the church of Pergamos, here Jesus revealed himself as the two-edged sword, which is the word of God. Hallelujah. And Jesus says, I know your works. Even in the midst of satanic deception, you have stood. In the heat where Satan dwells, you have stood. You have been faithful in holding the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. You have not denied his name, even unto death. And Jesus acknowledged the death of one of his saints in the church of Pergamos by the name of Antipas. Jesus says you have done the right thing because amidst you, even if you are standing in the very place where Satan dwells, the persecution is hottest in that area, you have stood firm. The message to you, my brother, my sister, is that whatever the circumstance you're going through, Jesus sees it. He acknowledged even the death of Antipas, not that he was not seeing it. Sometimes we ask questions which we cannot answer and say, God, where are you? Why am I going through all this? It doesn't mean that God is not seeing it. But he acknowledged the faithfulness of the church of Pergamos. The message to you is, as a church, be faithful. As a church, be resilient. As a church, be committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he sees it. He knows it. However, in the midst of all this, Jesus had, Jesus had a misgiving on the church of Pergamos. And he warns them, praise the Lord, he warns them, he warns them in verse, in verse 14, he says, but I have a few things against you, because that you have, because, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. For those of us that know the history of the children of Israel, Jesus was talking about an encounter that the children of Israel had with an international witch called Balaam. When they were going into the promised land, they passed through the land of the Moabites. But in the process of passing through the land of the Moabites, they had an encounter with this witch, who was hired by the king of the Moabites called Balak to come and cast these people. And when he failed to cast these people, he told the king of Moabites and said, you know what, the only thing you can do is to pollute these people. Pollute them with the falsehood. Pollute them with the morality. Give your daughters to them and take their, and take their daughters to your sons. You know, and when they did that, the Bible says that the children of Israel were polluted. And so Jesus was comparing the church of Pergamos to this and said, you are accepting false doctrine. You are accepting polluting doctrines. The teachings of Balaam is within your midst. And he was telling them, I want you to desist from that because they were tolerating the people that teach that. After these sessions here, we are going to be looking at the false doctrines because we see so many false doctrines today mushrooming everywhere in the church. And they are polluting doctrines the same as the doctrine of Balaam, the doctrines that pollute the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Similar to the doctrine of the Nicolotian. Praise the Lord. And Jesus warns them and, and says, you must repent. If you find yourself in this compromising situation, my brother, my sister, Jesus still expects you to repent. But he also said that those that overcome, they will eat of the hidden manna, which is the fruit of life. And a white stone with a secret name, with their secret name in it, is a precious reward. Number four, to the church of Thyatira. The church of Thyatira, Jesus reveals himself as the son of God. He reveals himself as the one whose eyes are like the flame of fire. And his feet are like the fine brass. Praise the Lord. And Jesus also acknowledges their good works. Jesus acknowledges their love for God and man. He acknowledges their service to God and man. He acknowledges their faith, their patience, and the principle of the last shall be the first. 
the principle of persevering as from the beginning to the end. That's what Jesus was acknowledging. However, this is what he said. He warned them. I want you to look at the warnings of Jesus as something very significant. If you can learn the warnings of Jesus, you will avoid the things that Jesus doesn't want. Because he was preparing his church. He wants a beautiful bride, a blameless bride. A bride that is going to, 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 to present to the Father. Hallelujah. You and I. And so we are mandated to look at the warnings of Jesus Christ as a blueprint for us to avoid in order to walk in the ways of righteousness and the love of God and in holiness. Hallelujah. So Jesus gives a warning to the church of Thyatira and said, you are tolerating the character and the lifestyle of Jezebel. Praise the Lord. The character and the lifestyle of Jezebel. Who was Jezebel? Jezebel, in the book of First Kings, we see the encounter with prophet Elijah. Jezebel was a queen of Israel who was married to the king and he diverted the children of Israel into the worship of Baal. So what are the characteristics of Jezebel? The characteristics of Jezebel are some of these. These are not absolute. Jezebel is, a, is one that promotes self. Promotes a lot of self. Self-exaltation. Self-gratification. Self-everything is about self. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And Jezebel teaches seduction. Jezebel promotes seduction. Seduction not only in teaching, but in deeds. In the way of dressing. When we go back to study the life of Jezebel, you find that Jezebel was a very seductive woman. At the point of her death, she wanted even so to seduce the person who wanted to destroy her, and that was Jehu. She even tried to seduce Jehu. Hallelujah. Je Jezebel was very seductive in her ways. And we see that all around. And they are seducing the servants of God every now and again. Praise the Lord. Jezebel is one that committed fornication and promoted serious idolatry. So Jesus promises that anyone that will behave like Jezebel or follow Jezebel, he would punish them. Hallelujah. And it will destroy you. As a child, this is a serious warning. Because the more we continue to promote the lifestyle of Jezebel, the more we put our lives and our churches and the members of our churches at the risk of destruction. The hand of God, the judgment of God will be upon us. And so we must avoid that. Hallelujah. Because Jesus said, I will kill her. And I will kill the, ch the children with death. So all churches shall know that Jesus Christ reigns in the hearts of men. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But he says he would reward the overcomers by giving them leadership over the nations. Praise the Lord. And they would become like the morning star. That is the church of Thyatira. Now number five, the church of Sardis. The church of Sardis, the Bible says, Jesus revealed himself as the seven spirits of God. And the one that has the seven stars. And Jesus says, I acknowledge your works. That you have, you have built for yourself a name. And, and yet you think you are living and yet you are dead. Hallelujah. You think you are living and yet you are dead. Because you have forgotten the commands of the Lord. And Jesus reminds them to be, pray, to be watchful. To be watchful is to be prayerful. Maybe we have been praying. Maybe we started well as a church and we are very prayerful. But time comes when we begin to fall back to the traditions of men. The way we used to pray, we, we begin to fall back. And Jesus says, you are losing your watchfulness as a watchman. Your position as a watchman. You no longer pray the way you used to pray. You no longer are zealous for the things of God the way you used to. Look back to where you came from. Praise the Lord. And Jesus encourages them and says, strengthen the things which remain. Hallelujah. Because he says, I have tested your works and I found them wanting. Praise the Lord. And he says that we must repent. This is what he says. That repent if you find yourself in this. Because I'm coming like a thief. And if Jesus comes like a thief after giving you this, 
I want you to study the book of Revelation, the beginning chapters. The messages to the seven churches is still for us, even up to today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And, but he says, there are others in your midst who are actually walking the right way. And he says, he would clothe them in white garment, and their name shall not be blotted out of the book of life. And he says, I will confess you before my father. Number six, Philadelphia, the church of Philadelphia actually did well. It is the only church that I see that Jesus acknowledges everything about them and encourages them to continue. And he says he knew their works. Hallelujah. And he says, because of what you have done, I've set before you an open door. Praise the Lord. When you look at the church of Philadelphia, they were doing everything that Jesus told them to do. And they were avoiding the other things for which the other churches were, were held in, in, in fault. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number seven and the final one, the church of Laodicea. Now the church of Laodicea, the Bible says that Jesus reveals himself as the faithful one and the true witness. And is the beginning of God's creation. And Jesus says, I know your works. Because you are neither cold nor hot, I would spew you out. This is the church which is accused of lukewarmness. Jesus accuses this church of lukewarmness. And Jesus hates lukewarmness with a passion. To those that are saved, you behave like saved. To those that are evil, you behave like evil. To them that are corrupt, you behave like corrupt. You do not want to let your light shine. And Jesus says, because of that lukewarmness, I will spew you out. I will spit you out of my mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus says, this is a church which boasted of being very rich, very wealthy. If you compare with the church, the church, the, the church of Smyrna, it was a very rich church in the physical. I could imagine it is like some of these churches today which have very expensive cars driving to their parking lots. You know? But the Bible says that they were poor in the spirit. I mean, they were, they were very poor. They were rich physically, but in the spiritual things, they were blind. Praise the Lord. They boasted of wealth, but Jesus says they were wretched. They were miserable. They were very naked and blind. These are the descriptions that Jesus gave them. And Jesus told them and says, you know what? You better seek counsel from me. Let me give you the life. Praise the Lord. So may God help us as we study the book of Revelation. The more we study the book of Revelation, the more we shall be able to avoid the things that Jesus doesn't want. May the Lord bless us as we continue with the next one on what we need to do. Let us pray. Father God, we say thank you. May you help us, O oh Lord, to follow the things that Jesus has revealed to us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.